morning now church, welcome to Church Online, I hope you're having a fun morning so far, in your pyjamas, relaxing, eating your breakfast, whatever your morning routine is, I'm so glad you've decided to join us this morning, you are in for a real treat. Can I ask for you to just share, share, share over Facebook, over Instagram, any social media, invite someone to church, just because we're not in our physical location doesn't mean that you can't invite someone this morning and they might need to hear the message that's spoken that very week that you do. So please share, 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 spread the word that Now Church is still happening because it's going to be a great morning. So in my Bible this week I've been reading the book of Proverbs and it's 3, 6 and it says in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight and I think that's so relevant in a time where we're not quite sure where we're going or what we're doing in this time that we're just trusting God and believing him to show us the right path. We could be at a crossroads with either a left or a right or a million different ways ahead of us and we're kind of stuck of which way to go but God shows us the way. He makes sure that we go on that path if we trust in him and that's what I want to encourage you to do this morning. We're going to have a time of worship now and I just want to encourage you to lift your hands. You're in your living room. This is probably the safest place that you can do it and not worry about people around you but just praise him. Don't be embarrassed. Don't let anything hold you back. Just be fully in worship. And here we go. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
Hey, well, we just wanted to take a quick moment in today's gathering uh, to honour and to celebrate someone. Uh, James Morgan, uh, who comes to our church, now church, an amazing uh, person, turned 50 this week. You wouldn't believe it for looking at him, uh, but he celebrated his 50th birthday on Friday. Uh, and um, we just wanted to say happy birthday to you, James. We love you, we celebrate you. We thank you for being uh, the person that you are. James serves uh, so much at church. He, he plays the drums in our worship band, uh, but more than that, he's a caring person. He's really interested in people. Uh, he remembers stuff. He asks the right questions. Uh, and we just love you, James. We appreciate you. We're so glad that you are part of our Now Church. And here's just a few more people uh, that want to say happy birthday to you and tell you uh, what you mean to them. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday James. James! You're a great guy. We love doing church with you and your amazing family. We well, hope you're celebrating in style. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye! Happy birthday! Hi James, happy birthday for Friday mate. Uh, I just want to say that I think you are such an amazing guy. You are so, so talented um, and such an amazing dad as well. I don't know how you have the patience to have your kids at band practice and still be able to play the drums as great as you do. Um, so I just, I think that is amazing and really inspiring um, to see. I, yeah, I just think you're awesome. And uh, here's to, here's to you, mate. Hi James, just want to say what a privilege it is to do worship with you uh, on Sundays. We think you're a great guy. Have an amazing 50th birthday. Uh, you're the best. Yeah James, uh, I just want to say what a pleasure it is um, working with you in the band. Um, you're an amazing drummer and uh, I hope you have an amazing weekend. Um, happy birthday. Happy birthday. offering now 
And if you are a visitor with us this morning, you are under no obligation to give. But if you are a regular attender, I just want to encourage you to sow into God's house, sow into the work that he's doing in our lives, in our communities and around the world and help us support others to spread God's love and show who Jesus is to the rest of the world who have yet to hear about him. So if you are giving to us this morning, you can give through the Church Suite app or you can give to us by standing order. You are in for a real treat this morning. We've got Sean speaking. It's going to be amazing. So here we go. Good morning now, Church. It's amazing to be able to share with you this morning. I hope you're all doing really well and I especially hope that those of you who've been on your own during this time of lockdown have been able to expand your social bubble as Boris Johnson puts it this weekend and invite someone round into your bubble for a cuddle <laughs> apparently that's the terminology I hope you've been able to connect with someone uh, it hasn't been the best week for having people over to your garden has it unless uh, you want to look like drowned rats by the end of it but things are slowly starting to adjust and get a little bit back to normal in our world and for us at home our eldest daughter will be going back to school on Monday something that she's not very excited about but I'm quite relieved to have been fired or at least released from my home teaching role but during this lockdown at home we've been reading the books the secret seven books to our girls don't know if you're familiar with them they were written in the late 1950s by Enid Blyton and they're full of all kind of things that don't really make sense anymore in the 21st century but our kids are so into it they've set up their own club called the Tremendous Two they meet in the spare bedroom there's a password we're not allowed in and they keep saying things like oh bother and oh mother please can we have some buns for our club so yeah, they're like living in this secret seven world, but as we read the books, there's loads of stuff in there we have to explain to them, like every time the secret seven are trying to trace a clue, they have to go to the post office and look in a telephone directory. Now, our kids have probably never even been to a post office, they certainly don't know what a telephone directory is, and they're constantly saying, well, they could have found that out on Google, Mum. The second thing that we keep having to explain is why their mother keeps telling the children, you must take some money in case you need to use the phone when you're out. And both our kids are like, but why would anyone put money in a phone, Mum? So we're having to explain that. But the truth is, in the last 60 years, since these books were written, our world has changed incredibly. And the truth is that even today and even this year, our world is moving and changing and adjusting at an incredible um, pace. And I don't know about you, but I think if we're all honest, many of us in January 2020, as we sat thinking about perhaps our hopes and dreams for this year, how we imagined this year would pan out. None of us probably imagined or anticipated the reality that we found ourselves in these past few months and the reality that we find ourselves in today. I certainly didn't imagine spending my days homeschooling my daughter. I didn't imagine that shops would be shut and I certainly didn't imagine that the doors of our church would be shut and that we wouldn't be gathering in person for much of the year and um, it's just amazing incredible isn't it how fast the world can change and even during this time how much the world has changed and I wonder what is the world that we go back to post COVID-19 or even as it seems living with COVID-19 going to look like this time next year what are our everyday lives going to look like what are our trips to Tesco going to look like? What is schooling and education going to look like? What is your workplace going to look like? And for me, I'm thinking, Lord, what is your church going to look like? What does this mean for us? What is this new season and new day we're entering into? The last time we had my parents come and stay with us, they're both in their 70s. We enjoyed a Chinese takeaway together. Now, my dad has been brought up in the a solid British way. He likes to have meat, two veg, potato every day. He's not too sure about rice and other foreign foods. He likes to have fish and chips on a Friday but as he's got older he started to venture out into different cuisines so they enjoyed a Chinese with us and at the end of the meal Marcus cracked open the fortune cookie and read out whatever it said. 
I noticed a wrapper from one of the cookies by my dad. So he said, oh, Dad, what did yours say? He said, oh, what do you mean, what did it say? We said, well, Dad, what was on the paper inside it? He said, oh, mine didn't have a paper inside it. I said, that's strange, Dad. Didn't, when you cracked it open, what, wasn't there a paper? It was just empty. He said, well, I didn't crack it open. I just put the whole thing in my mouth and swallowed it. But our world changes, doesn't it? It changes every day. And at the minute, honestly, I'm sure apocalyptic movies are going to be made about this time that we're living through and all the changes that we're working through. And many of you have been asking us over the past few weeks, you know, when's church coming back? When can we gather again? What's it going to look like? You know, can I bring my kids? Is it going to be safe? Where will it be? When will it be? How is it going to work? And I know lots of you have got those questions and we've heard from you and of course we're thinking about that and we're praying about that and we're looking at government guidance and guidelines to try and work out what that means to us. But one thing we do know is it's not going to be a flick of a switch and we're back to normal and we're back to how things were. In fact, going forward, the church could look very different for some time or maybe even forever, you know. But one thing I'm so grateful for and that I'm so thankful to God for and to you guys for is that we're a church that is not all about a gathering, is not all about a building, but even during this time when all we've had is this online connection and each other, we've still been a church that is able to grow and flourish and make an impact in our communities. And you know, that is the key. That is what church is really all about. It was never about a building. It was never about 10.30 on a Sunday morning. It was about us being people on a mission, families on a mission, scattered servants in our communities. And that's one of our values that we teach on, that we say, hey, this is the heart of Now Church. We value being scattered servants. We value church gathered, yes, but we gather so that we can scatter. And I really hope that, um, well, I know that that value has been put to the test at this time. And it's been amazing to hear your stories of connecting with neighbours, of praying with work colleagues, of reaching out to people in need and really being church on a mission. And that is what it's all about. Now in the Bible, we read about the life of David. He was the least of all his brothers, the youngest, a shepherd boy, yet he was chosen by God to become king. So David's life went through incredible change. He went from being just the little boy out in the field to becoming the next king of Israel. And he and his son after him ruled Israel for the time that Bible scholars call the golden age of Israel. They led it into victory, into the best years Israel had ever known. But during that season, David went through so much transition. His world changed incredibly. He went from being a shepherd boy to serving the king at that time, Saul, and then to being threatened by Saul and having to flee for his life, living in caves, being a refugee in exile. And then men started to come to him, warriors, people from the other tribes of Israel, and said, we'll stand with you, David, we'll fight with you. And the, when the time was right, he took the throne and he became the rightful and anointed king of Israel. Let me just share with you just one verse from 1 Chronicles 12. And this passage is where scripture lists the different men and the different people that are sort of coming over to David's side. And it says, you know, from Judah, there were 6,000 men armed for battle. From Simeon, there were 7,000 men and warriors ready for battle. From Levi, from Benjamin, from Ephraim, from Manasseh. And this is the verse I want to share with you from Issachar. Men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. So from Issachar came 200 chiefs, 200 men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. When we first heard the speech from Boris Johnson way back in, I think it was the 20th of March, telling us uh, which people needed to shield and that shops and leisure facilities were going to close and then that schools were going to close and churches were going to close. I don't know about you, but in our house, we had um, a few days of kind of panic, like, well, what are we supposed to do here, God? Like, you know, help us understand the times. How can we be in our first year of leading now church and not have a church to open and not have programs to run? And how, what does this look like? What do we do? And so we contacted a few of our other church leader friends. And to be honest, I think we were all in the same boat, kind of 
figuring it out together as I'm sure you were in your spheres of work and in your family life what does this mean for us and I think at the end of those conversations we all could have just done with God sending to us 200 chiefs from Issachar who understood the times and knew what to do we don't hear really anything more about them in scripture but I know they would have been a great encouragement and a great help to David because who in that situation doesn't want leaders to come alongside them who understand the times and know what to do and we want to be leaders of this church who understand the times and know what we should do and we want you to be people who understand the times and know what you should do so our prayer as we move forward as a church is that we don't just see with our eyes what's happening in the natural in the world and the things that are going on every day that like I've said are already going to be made into a Hollywood apocalyptic blockbuster no doubt but we also see beyond the natural we see in the spiritual what is happening what is happening in the times around us we don't just see the problems of this world but we see the solutions of heaven and we help be part of bringing them to earth and that is our prayer as we go forward as a church what is happening how can we understand the times and what does that mean for us what does that look like because we don't want to be the kind of church that swallows a fortune cookie whole or the kind of church that's still using a telephone directory when nobody else knows what one is we've got to have um, the mindset and the means to move with the times you know our mission and our mandate is unchanging Jesus said go into all the world and make disciples and that is what we're here for it's what we exist to do to empower people to bring change and transformation to their community but to help people move from death to life from darkness to light from despair to hope and that is our commitment that people might find Jesus our mission and our mandate and it's over 2,000 years old but yet the means and the mindset and the mentality required about how we achieve that how we go about that it has to move with our ever fast-paced moving time so I just want to share with you this morning now really quickly a few thoughts about church future what kind of church we need to be going forward what the church needs to look like if we want to continue to hold traction to hold weight going forward if we want to continue to make an impact where we are if we want to continue to see people come to know Jesus so let me start by sharing with you the first one of those the first thing I want to share is that we need to be a church that is focused on people not programs focused on people not programs the sad reality is that um, surveys conducted recently stats conducted recently show us that charities will close over the next coming years because of the impact of COVID-19 but also that churches churches right here in our own community and churches right here in our nation will close post COVID-19 and I think one of the reasons for that is when a church is solely focused on programs when all it has is a service or an event or a gathering the moment the government says the doors are shut you can't open them what are you left with if that's all you have you're left with nothing what people are missing right now isn't our programs they might miss coming to the programs but the key the thing they're missing is the person the personal touch the eye contact that says I see you the listening ear that says I hear you the hand on the shoulder that says let me stand with you at this time they're missing the personal contact they're missing us and what people need going forward is not our programs not the stuff we can put on but us people living breathing relational authentic people who say I get you and I'll stand with you and I'll walk through it with you and I'll be there through it with you and so going forward we've got to move from being fixated on programs to being fixated on people people are our priority and yes no doubt the church will use programs to help us reach people but we've got to make sure that our investment our finance our time our ministry isn't just a Sunday morning event or a program we can't now restrict our lives to say well I serve Jesus on a Sunday at 10 30 when I'm on the welcome team our ministry has to become our whole life our whole being and 
we've been so good at this during this period. I'm just so thankful to be part of a community like this that gets it, that says, actually, it's not what I do on a Sunday or whether I help out in a program at church, but it's who I am, living, breathing, alive in Jesus as I go to work, as I take my kids to school, as I go on a walk with the dog, as I live on my street and interact with my neighbours. I'm bringing Jesus to them. And that's the kind of church our world needs, a church that is fixated on people, not on programmes. So I just want to encourage you and thank you. Keep being willing, keep saying, you know, my life, my job, my business, everything I am, God, is for you. Would you give me opportunities to impact people, to make a difference for you? Because you guys have done it without the programmes, without the stuff that the church puts on. You're making a difference. You are leading people to Jesus. And that is what it's all about. And we want it to continue to be about that going forward. Yes, we can't wait to restart some of our programmes. We certainly can't wait to be able to gather again in person and do things that make a difference together in our world. But it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than programmes. The church future, it needs to be about people, not programmes. The second thing I want to share with you is that the church future needs to be about servants, not sovereigns. Servants, not sovereigns. Jesus said this to his disciples in Mark chapter 10. You know, the rulers in this world lord it over people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as a church and as followers of Jesus, we are called to be people that serve, not people that lord it over others, not people that judge and condemn, but people that serve, a different kind of people. And so much can change in our interactions with our everyday world, with our trips to the supermarket and dropping off our kids at school. If we just think, I'm here to serve, I'm positioned here to serve, it can change our mentality and our mindset from being one of, you know, why are they doing that or they shouldn't be doing that or I don't want to help people like that to thinking actually the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and if Jesus can do it, if Jesus can wash the feet of his enemies, Lord help me be a servant in your world. You'll all remember last month from the news the Dominic Cummings saga of Barnard Castle and Durham and the reason that struck a chord so much with our nation and why so many people were up in arms about it is because we recognise in our hearts, hey, leadership, good leaders are supposed to serve the rules, the laws, the things that they use to govern us. They're supposed to be in our benefit in order to serve us. And so when we sense in someone almost like a self-serving tendency, like they did that to serve themselves and it hasn't helped me at all, we react against that in our hearts. And, you know, the same is true with a view of people and the church. Sometimes the church can be accused of having almost a celebrity culture or a hierarchy of leadership, and that is not the kind of leadership we need going forward. As leaders, we, we exist to serve you, to serve the church, to serve the community that we're in, to serve Jesus by doing that. And it's the same for you in your world, in your workplace, in what you do. We need to be a church that serves, a church that replicates what Jesus did, what Jesus showed us, which is to serve others, to lay down our lives for others. So we want to be a church that is people focused. We want to be a church that serves. And the last thing I want to share, and these are not everything that we feel or think about the church going forward, but just a few thoughts about how we can be leaders that understand the times and a church that understands the times. The third thing I want to share is that we want to be a church that is about pursuing justice, not just stuff. Pursuing justice, not just stuff. Something that is really valuable to us and valuable to Jesus that we want to establish as a value of now church going forward is to make God's heart for justice our heart. We know we're all too aware that we live in a broken and hurting world. And you know what the Bible shows us? How God answers the cries of the broken and the hurting. When we speak to him about it, when we cry out to him about it, how can this be? He answers by saying, I send you. 
He answered by sending Moses to free the Israelites from slavery. He answered time and time again by sending people into situations they probably didn't want to go in to exact justice, to bring about justice. Justice flows from the heart of God. It's about bringing wholeness to people and about bringing wholeness to our towns and cities and our neighbourhoods. The justice of God. And we've been thinking about it a lot with what's been going on in the news and in people's hearts recently. And it was so amazing to be able to partake in the conversation of um, the Black Lives Matter movement that is really on people's hearts at the minute across culture. And to hear Yvette share last Sunday just some incredible thoughts about how her first and primary identity is as a child of God. And because perhaps because of that lens, she doesn't even see racism in workshop, which is incredible. Thank you so much for those thoughts, Yvette. But we know there are so many issues of injustice in our world. And one thing the church is great at is giving stuff to help problems. And the government has acknowledged that in this season. Without the church, people would be in much worse dire straits of poverty than they are. There'd be more homeless people. There'd be less people able to access food from food banks. The church does such an incredible job across our nation of being that backbone of society, of providing for people's needs, of giving stuff. And we want to be a part of that and continue to be a church that is able to meet people's needs practically and physically. But I also feel that the church future needs to go beyond just giving stuff into really pursuing justice, into really dealing with the root. What is the root of this problem? What is the cause? Where is the injustice behind this? Because we can carry on sticking plasters over the issues or we can be part of God's voice to the nation and speak into issues of injustice and actually make a difference. So part of our role as devoted disciples who are scattered servants in our world is to act justly. Micah 6 verse 8 says, He has shown you what is good. And that is to do justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So the church going forward needs to be a church that challenges injustice, that speaks to the root and the heart of the matter, believing that whatever we do for the least of people, we do it as to Jesus himself. That is what Jesus' words say. So we wanna meet people's needs physically, of course we do. We wanna meet people's needs spiritually, but we also wanna be a part of bringing wholeness to people wholeness to our communities, wholeness to our neighbourhoods, of seeing God's rule, God's kingdom, as it is in heaven, coming on earth. So today has been a little bit different, perhaps from our normal content of message, but I hope you feel encouraged and also challenged by the kind of church that God is calling us to be. I hope if you're new to church today, or you've only ever watched us online, that you heard something of our heart today and it connected with your heart because this is might not be what you imagine church to be it might not fit your mindset or mentality of what you saw the institution of the church being but this is the kind of church we are and this is the kind of church that God has given us the mandate to be in answer to your questions about gathering together and what that's going to look like all we can say is we're still waiting for the government guidelines on how that can happen and what that can look like. We know it could be from the beginning of July that we're allowed to gather, but that will be with social distancing restrictions in place. We know that for the time being, we'll be meeting at our Langold location. And we're not sure quite yet until we get the guidelines how that will come to pass and what that will mean for each one of us. And especially those with children who, as mine have proved to me many times over this period, have no concept of the idea of social distancing or remaining two metres away from someone. But um, we will let you know in due course on that. But those of you who watch online, don't worry. We intend to keep this platform functioning for the foreseeable future and hopefully forever. You know, it's been amazing to connect with new people online, to reach people across our world online. It's not something that we're looking to let go of. So don't worry if you connect with us online we'll still be here and those of you looking to gather again we'll let you know as soon as we're able to what that's going to look like and how it can happen let me just pray for us as we finish this morning
Father, we thank you that you are the God who changes times and seasons, who deposes kings and rulers, who shakes up principalities and powers, and who moves us from death to life. We thank you that you have broken chains over our lives and set us free, God. We thank you that you understand the times and you want to give us the wisdom and knowledge to do the same. Lord, we pray this week by the power of your spirit that we hear from heaven, your heart for our world at this time and your heart for our church at this time and your heart for each one of our lives and our families at this time. We pray this week for children returning to school, for people returning to work, and for those who are excited to get back shopping and out into society, God, your protection over each one of us, your hand over each one of us, God, and your blessing on, on us and on our families. We just thank you so much for who you are, God. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you joined us for the first time today, or you're not sure who we are, or you want to know more, that's absolutely incredible. We welcome you. Send us an email to hello at nowchurch.org.uk or DM on our social media channels or in the comments right now. Just to say hello, say that you're here and we have a free gift for you. We'd love to send to you, no strings attached, just information and gifts about who we are. So if you'd like to receive one, do let us know and we'd love to get that to you. What an amazing message this morning. I just pray that we go into our weeks just changing lives and just touching the hearts of other people. You know, I absolutely love Sunday mornings and unfortunately this is it. We've finished our service for this morning, but before you go, I just want to tell you about what's happening in the life of the church this week. So on Tuesday morning, we have men's prayer at 8.30 a.m. And then on that same day, we have quiz at 8 p.m. I love quiz, I'm not gonna win. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, we have women's prayer meeting at 7.30 in the morning on Zoom. And then on Thursday, we have got Kids Connect at six o'clock and we'll post that on, out on our social media. And then at 8.15, we have our Bible course. And we are a few weeks in, but don't worry about it. Please join us. It is absolutely fantastic. And we're going to be doing that on now.online.church. Uh, and then we'll have a Zoom call afterwards to discuss and work through the video. And then on Friday, kids, this is for you. Um, we have got a kids Zoom hangout and it is going to be amazing. We had one a couple of weeks ago now and we had so much fun. It's going to be fantastic. The time for that will be confirmed. So make sure you just check on social media uh, to keep updated so then you can join on with us. And then on Sunday, as usual, we have kids at 10 a.m. Uh, we have normal church at 10.30 and then we have pre youth at 11.15 uh, and then we have youth in the afternoon at 3pm. So if you need any more information just contact us uh, through Facebook or email us at hello at nowchurch.org.uk and we will get back to you as soon as possible. But I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you next week.